Tonight on New Center. Alumni Tower stairs are being renovated. Students grab a bite to eat while playing some bingo in Beaker Bingo Blowout. And gather round as we hear the tales told at Cave Run. All this and more tonight on New Center. Good evening and welcome to New Center. I'm Danian Snell. And I'm Ben Plaxico. We want to remind our viewers that they can watch us live at 5 on twitch.tv slash msutv77 and on campus cable on channel 85. Here is what is making headliners for September 29th, 2022. Yesterday was Moorhead State University's career fair. Students who attended were asked to dress professionally and bring their resumes. They were given the opportunity to speak to various graduate schools along with companies looking to hire for jobs or internships. Students were also offered free professional headshots. If you are not ava available to make the event and are interested in opportunities available to you, check out the Simplicity Jobs and Careers app. The MSU Space Science Center is hosting a laser light show the second and fourth Saturday of every month. month. The Star Theater has shows from 1.30 to 2.30 and 6.30 to 7.30. Tickets can be purchased at the door. $10 for adults, $5 for children, but shows are free for MSU students and seniors. The shows are held at the Star Theater with surround sound and digital projectors. For more information, visit events.moreheadstate.edu. The Campus Activities Board hosted a pinata making event Monday. Students got the chance to take a break and create their very own pinatas. Spanish Heritage Month is coming to a close and CAP is wrapping it up with some fun and creativity by making pinatas. I know I did this when I was really small when I was young with my family, so it's just something that I thought like, you know, would be really cool to show other people how to do, um, especially because it's just like a fun craft and especially with like, you know, exams, I know it's getting near midterm, so I wanted to do something a little less stressful. Um, yeah, we were supposed to have salsa dancing, but it's okay, you know, um, it, you know, we just had to work with what we got. Hopefully the next person, you know, they can get this event, you know, and actually have the salsas and piñatas, because we have, uh, we did piñatas last year, so I'm hoping they'll, they'll keep, uh, you know, the tradition going, but if not, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm sure, like, they'll, there's plenty of other cultures to explore as well during this time. Um, so we saw this downstairs on the little campus activities board flyer and uh, we just thought it would be a lot of fun to uh, to come up and do this. Um, we stayed for a little like short time but uh, but we, we enjoyed our time here. Students were able to use multiple balloons, different colored tissue paper, and paint to bring their creations to life. Everyone got to enjoy upbeat music, a creative activity with fellow peers, and were able to leave with their very own handmade pinatas. For News Center, I'm Maya McIntosh. As a part of Global Diversity Month, the Campus Activities Board is also hosting a Global Diversity event this Tuesday, October the 4th, from 3 to 6 at the Prefontaine Pub in ADOC. The event will include cuisine from India, Mexico, China, and Spain. If you are interested about other events CAB has planned, visit them on Instagram at cab underscore MSU or on the Eagle link. Later, New Center will take a look at Cave Run's official annual storytelling festival held this past weekend. And the alumni hall are being fixed. Learn more about the process coming up. Back with your seven day forecast after this. Do you consider yourself a leader? Then apply today to be a residential advisor at Moorhead State. You'll be a part of making a huge difference on campus. You even get a room provided to you as an extra perk. As an RA, you do your best to make sure dorm life is awesome. Apply today. Be an RA. 
I'm Elise Akers and I am the MSU Four Paws president and this is my first semester as president. So MSU Four Paws is an organization here on campus and we actually work directly out of the nonprofit organization called Four Paws for Ability. Our main goal is to socialize the dogs, um, so take them anywhere and everywhere we go, show them that the world isn't scary, introduce them to all different kind of things that they'll see as a service dog. You know, our dogs make lastic impacts on everyone um, and they're able to place with children who truly need them. Um, so kind of just being able to make that huge impact is something really special. Friends of the Rodburn Hollow Park are hosting a concert series featuring local artists. The artists will perform under the trees at the park. The event is free and open to the public. It takes place on October 3rd at 5.30 to 7.30. For more information on this event, check out the Friends of Rodburn Hollow Park on Facebook or go to the Moorhead Tourism website. For some students, getting basic needs and food can be a tough challenge. MSU offers assistance through Eagle Essentials, which has come back this fall to support struggling students. Any student with an Eagle ID card has access to services, food, and toiletry pantry. Eagle Essentials can be found in room 251 in ADUC and is available Monday 11 to 2, Tuesday 2 to 4, Wednesday 11 to 2, and Thursday 4.30 to 5.30. For more information, head to the Moorhead State website. This Saturday, October 1st, is International Observe the Moon Night. The MSU Star Theater will be celebrating with an evening on events from 5 to 8.30. Space lovers can enjoy a planetarium show, live music, folk art, refreshments, and an outdoor star party. The Space Science Center is one of 1,148 NASA registers events being held on the International Observe the Moon Night. While participating in the global celebration, the Space Science Center also wants to celebrate their own accomplishments of this past year including the upcoming launch of the Lunar Ice Cube satellite on the rocket Artemis 1, and as well as recent upgrades to the Star Theater's dome and laser system. Admission is $5 for kids and senior citizens, $10 for adults, and free for MSU students and staff. The Residence Hall Association teamed up with Moorhead State University's Dining Services to host Beaker's Bingo Blowout. Students got the opportunity to play bingo and win prizes. The Residence Hall Association held a Beaker Bingo Blowout event at The Rock this week. New Center got the chance to see how the event went. G50. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so today we're having a Beaker's Bingo Blowout, which is a, it's just a bingo event hosted by RHA. NRHH, which is the National Residence Hall Honorary Association and Dining Services here at Moorhead State. And so we're just having a bingo event and we're going to have a lot of prizes for students. The Rock is close to the residence hall, so that's why we're here. And we figured it would just be a fun little event for students to come to and kind of play while they eat. It's not inconvenient, it's not out of their way. It's just if they showed up and wanted to participate, then they can win some free prizes from us. I-21. So the reason I came today was because I saw a lot of flyers about it and it just seemed like something fun to do with some of my friends. The college experience is about getting your education first, but it's also about getting that college experience and attending events, having fun, meeting people, and just getting out of your room. For more information from the Residence Hall Association, follow them on Instagram at RHA Moorhead. This has been Katie Pierce reporting for News Center. News Center looks forward to covering more events from Moorhead Dining Services and from the Moorhead State Residence Hall Association. There is a call for art by the Bluegrass Printmakers for artists to submit work to their All Hallows Inc. Gallery exhibit. The call is open to all artists of any media. The only criteria is that the pieces have be creepy. Works will be posted in a virtual gallery on their website and social media. Artwork will be in their exhibit at the Breadbox Gallery Saturday, October 29th from 4 to 9 p.m. Viewers will vote for their favorite piece, and the top two most voted pieces will receive gift cards to the Blick Art Supplies. The deadline is this Saturday, October 1st. There is a $15 entry fee for non-members. For more information about the call and submission, visit bgprintmakers.org. 
This past Sunday, September 25th, the Caveron Symphony Orchestra presented Italian Treasures. The performance held a variety of pieces from the greatest Italian composers, including Rossini, Puccini, Mendelssohn, and Vivaldi. The orchestra was directed by Dr. Derry, Terry Durbin and featured guest soloist Dr. Eric Brown on the baritone and Mr. Bryce Farrar on the violin. Attendees of the event enjoyed music at the Moorhead Conference Center. The annual Cave Run Storytelling Festival took place this past weekend. New Center was there. The Cave Run Storytelling Festival has been a Moorhead favorite for over 23 years. You know, I tell people outside of here all the time that it is probably the best thing Rowan County does as far as big events. It's just, I mean, you can look around, the weather's perfect and beautiful. We're, we're right here on the lake, so it just makes me really proud to be a native. The Storytelling Festival features traveling storytellers that gather to entertain the Moorhead community with stories and songs. The Cave Run Storytelling Festival featured a store booth where people could purchase different kinds of merchandise and sign up to perform a story slam where participants volunteer to tell a story at the festival. The festival was closed down for two years due to COVID-19. This was the festival's first year back. You know, you never know coming back from something like COVID and a few years off how attendance is going to be, but it has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, one of the committee members said they think this is historic numbers for a Saturday morning session, which is great. We saw about 33, 3,400 students on Thursday and Friday. So you can really tell people are just excited to be back, excited to be at a festival. The tellers are excited to be here. So it's been a great turnout so far. The festival also required lots of volunteers to lend a helping hand. I love volunteering with the festival. It's a chance once a year to see people that I don't see any other place. This has been Kylie Pollitt reporting for News Center. To find out more information on next year's festival, visit caverunstoryfest.org. We'll be right back with weather after this. Did you know that MSU offers all students a shuttle bus for stops on campus? After starting an overflow at 7 a.m., the shuttle makes its way to Baird Music Hall. Next on the stop is the bell tower, and then ADAC. Before heading back to overflow, the shuttle makes its last stop at Cher. The shuttle runs from 7 a.m. to 3.15, Monday through Friday, with a lunch break of 10.45 to 11.45. Did you know Moorhead State University has a satellite campus in Ashland? The campus offers you the opportunity to complete bachelor's and master's degrees from the ACTC campus. With small class numbers, the two most popular programs offered here are the social work and education programs. For more information, contact the transfer coordinator, Jen Timmerman, or the director of the Ashland campus, Dr. Nancy Preston. Eagles. I'm Katie Pierce with your weather. So right now current conditions in Moorhead are cloudy. We have had a high of 61. Humidity has been at 69 percent and winds have been going at 8 miles per hour. As for the rest of Kentucky, in Paducah it's 72 degrees along with Bowling Green. In Louisville it is 70 degrees. Frankfurt 68 degrees. Lexington 66. Us in Moorhead 61 and Ashland at 66 degrees. For tonight's forecast, expect clear, beautiful skies with a low of 46. Precipitation at 7% and sunset at 7.19 p.m. For tomorrow's forecast, expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 69, sunrise at 7.28 a.m. Now as for the rest of the week, Thursday we will have partly cloudy skies with a high of 61 and a low of 46. Friday, partly, partly cloudy skies, high of 69 and a low of 52. Now over the weekend we will have some rain showers. Saturday we will have a high of 62 and a low of 53. Sunday we will have a high of 64 and a low of 51. So if you are traveling back to Moorhead this weekend, make sure you're careful. Monday, we are having partly cloudy skies with a high of 64 and a low of 50. Tuesday, 
we will have partly cloudy skies with a high of 67 and a low of 45. Stay partly cloudy skies with a high of 70 and a low of 49. Now as for the rest of the country, we can see in Seattle, Washington, 70 degrees, Phoenix, Arizona, 99 degrees, Salt Lake City, 82 degrees. But as we get closer to where we are, Chicago, 61 degrees, Nashville, 75, but Washington, D.C. is at 70 degrees. Now for some history for you guys today. 30 years ago today, September 29th, 1992, we had a high of 76 and a low of 63 with 0.34 inches of rain, but it was a mostly sunny sky that day. When we come back from the break, Joseph Castle will give us the latest MSU sports scores. Camden Carroll Library has a variety of services to offer, including database access, MSU archives, reservable class space, the Tutoring and Learning Center, and more. Whether you're an MSU student, faculty member, or someone diving into a research project, Camden Carroll Library is there to support you. For more information, visit Camden Carroll Library online today. In the center of Moorhead State is the Claypool Young Art Building. This building is home to the university arts, like web design, studio arts, fine arts, and more. On the second floor, there is a working art gallery. And this gallery is open to students to enjoy the art and some quiet during their work day. Located all over the building and along the hallways, there are student-made displays. Head over and check it out. I'm Joseph Castle and I'm here with your MSU sports updates for the week. First up, MSU soccer traveled to Tennessee this past Sunday to play OVC rival UT Martin, winning the game 3-1. This win marks MSU soccer besting their win total last season, securing the program's fifth win this season to last year's four wins. MSU Hadley Citron headlined the game with two goals along with Nicole Fiantico contributing a goal of her own. By the second half, MSU had a 3-0 lead over the Skyhawks and only allowed one goal very late into the game, resulting in a win for the Eagles. MSU soccer's record is now 5-4-1 as they take on Eastern Illinois at home today, following with Little Rock on Sunday. MSU football was up against Stetson last Saturday, unfortunately losing 38-26 to the Hatters in the Pioneer League opener for both sides. The main struggle for the Eagles was their offense, being limited to under 200 yards in the game with four turnovers. Meanwhile, the special teams played well for MSU, with Jihad McCall and Cooper Kensrick recording multiple block punts and field goal attempts, with one leading into a touchdown. The Eagles were up early in the game, but the Hatters came alive during the second quarter and scored three straight times and turned the tides to steal the game from MSU. MSU's football record falls down to one and three on the season as they hope to bounce back at home this Saturday versus Presbyterian. MSU volleyball played Lindenwood at an OVC weekend matchup and took both games. 
The first game was played on Friday and had MSU defeating the Lions 3-1 to to open out OVC play. This win marks eight straight seasons of MSU winning their OVC home opener. Multiple star performances all around allowed the Eagles to gain momentum after the second set to close out the opening game. The second game was on Saturday where MSU once again beat Lindenwood 3-1. to Lindenwood took an early set, but the Eagles came back to take the remaining sets in the match. Erin Wolgenstahl had a career-high 11 blocks on the night, while Peyton Isley had a team-high three kills. With this, MSU closed out their first OVC weekend in style. MSU Volleyball is now 6-7 and seven on the season and will travel to Illinois to play Southern Illinois University Edward, Edwardsville in an OVC matchup this weekend starting tomorrow. Lastly, Sunday and Monday, MSU golf women's team traveled to Illinois to play their UIC Rare Ridge Invitational, placing first in the event for the second year in a row. Unlike last year's performance, the Eagles led from start to finish in an efficient display. MSU won nine strokes over second places Green Bay and Western Michigan. Out of all the great performances, freshman Ruth Tossen shined when she secured her first top five performance and was only four strokes shy of first place. Three other Eagles placed top ten, showcasing all all-round dominance that the Eagles had at the event. MSU Golf will be able to rest until they have to travel to South Carolina to take part in the Edisto Island Invitational next Sunday to Tuesday. That's all I have for you this week. Don't go anywhere as we'll be heading back to the news desk and also checking out some user submitted photos right after this. Have a package or need stamps? No need to drive across town when you can stay on campus. The University Post Office is your one stop for all of your mailing needs. Located inside ADUC, beside the Eagle Card Office, we are here for the convenience of you. Purchase stamps or money orders, ship out packages, and so much more. Please visit our website for more info. The University Post Office is open from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Come see us today. Campus Activities Board is hosting a coffee and coloring book event tomorrow, Friday, September 30th. The event will be held at ADUC Prefontaine Pub from 5 to 7. Students will get a break from studying to enjoy coffee and make some art. For more information, check out Eagle Link or follow the Campus Activities Board Instagram at cab underscore MSU. Midterms are approaching and the stress is kicking in. If you or someone you know is in need of support, you can take advantage of MSU's free mental health counseling services. The services are in the Alley Young Building by appointment only. You can schedule an appointment by calling 606-783-2055. Office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. For students in active crisis, walk-ins are available. For more information, you can email counseling and health services at moreheadstate.edu. Construction is underway at one of MSU's residence halls. Kaylee Manshine has the story. The stairs at the back of Alumni Tower are currently undergoing renovations. I'm excited for stairs to be back, uh, but the fact that they were gone Yeah, every time I go to the gym, it's uh, it's kind of a damper to have to do an entire lap around campus versus just walking down my back stairwell. An MSU student expresses excitement over the stairs being finished. I haven't seen them in working order over there since I've been 
a student here at MSU, so I think it'll be cool to have them up and running. I think it'll be very convenient when they are fixed because it'll cut down a lot of the time. It'll take me to like get to and from the pod because I won't have to walk all the way around it. And you know, as a college student, I don't have much extra time, anyways. Reporting for News Center, I'm Kaylee Manshine. The next time you visit the pod, take a peek around the back to see the renovation's progress. Are you a fan of art or music? If so, the Rowan County Arts Center is holding an artist meet and greet for studio artist Joe Sarter tomorrow from 4.30 to 6.30. Visitors are able to have a chat with Joe while looking at the artwork he has set up in his Music Mementos exhibit. The exhibit holds 30 paintings, a few mixed media pieces, and collages all of which will be on display until this Saturday. For more information, visit the Rowan County Arts Center website. The last Maker's Market event of the year is happening this Saturday on the lawn of the Rowan County Arts Center from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The market is a community-wide event that takes place on the first Saturdays of April through October. It encourages people to shop locally in order to benefit small businesses here in Moorhead. Locally provided food, arts and crafts, and more will be available for attendees. The event is free and charge and encourages all to come. For more information or to become a vendor, call 606-783-9857. Hi Eagles, as you can see behind me, we do have some viewer submitted photos of weather on campus this past week. As you can see behind me, we're starting to see some beautiful fall colors in our trees on campus with a beautiful clear blue sky. But it hasn't been all sunny this week. We've had, we have had some gray skies and gloomy weather in front of the rock. We've also had some gray weather and cold weather too this week. But along with the cold and gloomy weather, we have had some beautiful skies with a few clouds, very shady. Lastly, we have um, a beautiful clear blue sky behind me. We'll be back to the news desk right after the break. Women's virtue is amazing sisterhood and dependence. Women's Virtue is a safe place, it's spiritually powerful, and it's truly divine amongst women. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Emotional support animals are small household animals such as a cat, dog, rabbit, and others that provide support to alleviate symptoms of a person's disability. So, what should you do if you think you need an ESA? You will need to complete the ESA request form for students, ask your health provider to complete the ESA form for providers, and then submit those forms to the Disability Services Coordinator for consideration. For more information about ESAs, visit Disability Services located in ADUC. Do you want more energy? Hi, I'm Dwayne The Rec Johnson. When I want to get in shape, I go to The Rec Center. Here, you can catch up on your cardio. Pick up a bit of weight. Yoga. Work the machines, and I don't mean your bodies. Recreation. So get healthy, be happy. Did you know that your body is made up of about 60% of water? Your energy levels, brain functions, physical performance, and more are significantly affected by your water intake. That's why there are filtered water bottle refill stations located on Moorhead State's campus. The station also keeps track of every plastic water bottle that is saved. So check out the bottle stations around campus, like the ones in ADUC and the REC, for clean, free filtered water.
That's all the news from us here at News Center. Good night and thanks for watching.